as I'm sure you're aware, LVGL, which stands for Light and Versatile Embedded Graphics Library, is the most popular free and open source embedded graphics library around. It targets any microprocessor, any microcontroller, and any display type to build beautiful graphical user interfaces. Uh, and of course, it works with RT Thread. Uh, yesterday, Hima uh, Mulliman Gallum gave a great presentation on the use of LVGL. Well, our next presenter is G G Gabor Kismahoshi, who is the author of LVGL and the CEO of LVGL LLC. And the topic of Gabor's talk is introducing Squareline Studio V2. So, uh, Gabor, over to you. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, I'm just quickly sharing my screen. Okay, so welcome everyone. My name is Gabor Kishvamoshi, and as Max mentioned, I'm the author of the LVGL library, and I'm also the CEO of LVGL LLC. If you have already checked out LVGL on GitHub, you might have seen me with the username of Kishve Gabor. So let's start with LVGL. <clears throat> LVGL stands for Light and Versatile Graphics Library. So it's a graphics library which helps you to create impressive user interfaces on resource-constrained embedded devices. It's a full-featured solution. It has more than 30 built-in widgets like drop-down lists, text, input, text inputs, keyboards, charts, sliders, bars, buttons, labels, and many others. Basically, what you can see um, on an Android or iOS application can be realized with LVGL as well. LVGL has a powerful style and layout system too. These are inspired by CSS. CSS is the styling mechanism of the web pages. So the same technology, the same philosophy, which makes the web pages so powerful, flexible, and versatile is available in LVGL as well. It comes with an advanced typography system too, supporting many languages, including Persian on Earth and uh, Arabic languages with right to left and left to right writing direction support, it works with the Asian languages like Japanese, Korean, or Chinese, of course, and it works with the Latin-like languages as well. LVGL is a free solution, and its source code is fully available on GitHub. Um, it's distributed under an MIT license, which makes <clears throat> the commercial use of LVGL very simple. Basically, with an MIT license, all you need to do is adding a line of sentence in your user guide, readme, documentation, or similar place, stating that we have used LVGL to create the UI of this product, and that's it. You need to do need to do only this, and you can use LVGL for free in commercial projects as well. I can proudly say that LVGL is quite popular today. It's downloaded in every minute from GitHub, and it's already supported by the leading vendors of this industry. You can use LVGL with basically any controllers and microprocessor with bare metal or with real-time or normal operating systems. And you can drive OLED, e-paper, monochrome, TFT displays, or even monitors with it. LVGL has a UI editor tool as well. It's called Squareline Studio. I don't want to talk too much about it now because I will introduce it in detail in the second half of my presentation. And finally, we are doing some services like UI design, UI implementation, and consulting but I will talk a little bit more detail about it as well. On the screen, you can see some UIs that we have created with LVGL and Squareline Studio. These are just simple images here, but if you click on this link, it will open our web page, which is lvgl.io, and you can go to the demos menu where you can find interactive examples. So as I mentioned, LVGL is completely platform independent, and what we did here, is uh, just using the C source code of LVGL and the C source code of the demos and compile them to a web page using a special compiler and just integrated this web page, the result HTML file into our web page. So here, the first demo that I'd like to show you is a widgets demo. This is how the widgets look like out of the box. So for example, if you create a button with LVGL, it will look like this. 
if you scroll down a little bit, you will find some text inputs, a slider, some switches. If you click on the text inputs, a nice virtual keyboard will appear. Below that, we have a password field where the last um, character is automatically converted to a bullet. You can also pick a date using this drop dance to select the year and the month and select the exact date. On the second tab, you can find some examples for the widgets that you can do, uh, sorry, for the charts that you can do. Here we have a bar chart, it's also scrollable. Some meters and gauges here. And on the last tab, we have some other type of charts, some checkboxes, and another list of images and texts. This nice uh, smartphone-like scrolling behavior is available out of the box in LVGL. Basically, if the content of a widget is larger than the widget itself, it, became, it becomes automatically scrollable with this uh, scroll momentum effect and this, elast uh, sorry, this elastic scroll feature. It's worth mentioning that the basic theme supports changing the default coral of the UI as well. But on the second demo, you can see that you can do much more customizations with LVGL. This e-bike demo shows a very, very different UI. <clears throat> and it's very important that it was created in Squareline Studio by a designer without writing a single line of code. Here you can see a nice battery charging animation. And here you can see a pin pad to unlock your device. The third demo is a smartwatch demo that we have designed for NXP. It was also created in Squareline Studio without writing a single line of code again. And we have some more demos here. Um, feel free to check them out later if you wish. A little bit more detail about our services. So we are doing a graphics design service. We have in-house um, graphics designers who are experts in creating embedded UIs. So if you have, <clears throat> uh, if you are a typical embedded device, which is usually not that fast, doesn't have enough memory to create a uh, super impressive UI that you have imagined, you can count on us and you can be sure that we can design a UI for you that respects the limitations of your hardware and, and will impress your customers as well. We can also implement the UI that we have designed, or of course, we can work based on the designs uh, that you provide. As we are the main uh, developers of LVGL, you can be sure that the result, the implementation, is very well optimized for LVGL. We can also help you with uh, driver development and optimizing your drivers uh, to the actual hardware. So if you want to speed up your UI, uh, UI a little bit, you can contact us and, and we can talk about all these. We are doing a general cons uh, consulting support as well. So if you have uh, graphics designers, uh, software developers, and hardware experts as well, you might still have some questions about some best practices, how to approach some problem, how to uh, optimize something. So if you have similar questions, just contact us and we can discuss all these. And finally, we are doing a board certification service. It's for manufacturers who create boards with, uh, with displays. These manufacturers can send these boards to us and we will upload uh, a benchmark demo to these boards, record a video, write a blog post, and uh, we will publish the result and, uh, and our review on our blog and, our, and, our web, and on our web page. This way, people can easily compare these boards, even if they have very different microcontrollers or microprocessors and very different uh, display size regarding resolution or, um, or size or interface in general. If you would like to check out the boards that we have already certified, you can go to our webpage again, lvgl.io, and go to the boards menu. And here you can see the boards. It's worth mentioning that uh, a development board from RTThread is under certification, so it will be shown here very soon. So stay, tu stay tuned. Here 
If you would like to use LVGL with RTThread, you can do it very easily because LVGL is available in RTThread's software package manager. So you can integrate LVGL into your RTThread project with one click. If you would like to try out some ready to use projects, you can do it as well. LVGL is available in the QMU simulator and the Visual Studio simulator as well. And to mention some uh, real hardware, um, LVGL is supported for nine Nuvoton boards, four STM boards, two Renaissance board, and for some NXP, Infineon, Synwit, and Raspberry devices as well. Let's continue with Squareline Studio. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, Squareline Studio is the official visual drag and drop UI editor for LVGL. Uh, it can be used to make UI development much faster and simpler. If you use Squareline Studio, you can put together the UI in a visual way. You can just use your mouse to create uh, the widgets, set their position and size, and uh, it's just much simpler than coding. If you are using LVGL, you need to be a software developer basically, because uh, you need to write code, call functions like set button position, uh, set size, add event callback, or things like these. But in Squareline, you can just use your mouse and uh, create a UI, a fully functional UI, very intuitively. Uh, due to this, event designers without any programming knowledge can create fully functional UIs in Squareline. This software comes with a very flexible licensing plan. <clears throat> um, you can just download it even without registering to our website and try it out in a 30 days of trial period. After that, if you want to use Squareline for personal or hobby purposes, you can do it for free. Or if you want to use it for your business, you can choose from our very cost efficient subscription plans. Squareline Studio V1, which is the current version, was released in 2022 February, so more than a year ago. And since then, we got more than uh, 25,000 users. Instead of just listing its main features, I like to show it in the practice. So if you start Squareline Studio, you will see this launcher window. Here you can select the target device for your project. Here are some options for development on desktop, but if you go to, for example, here to the Nuvoton tab, you will find three Nuvoton boards. These boards are uh, using RTThread under the hood, so if you'd like to try out a square line with Nuvoton and RTThread, you can do it with one click, basically. To show you the basic features of uh, a square line view one, I will open an example. Let's use this 3D printer. It takes a few seconds to load it because it's a quite large project. So here uh, in the middle of the screen, you see the actual screens of the UI. Again, this demo was created also by a designer without writing any code. I think one of the greatest features of Squareline is that if you want to try out uh, your UI, you can do it with a single click without waiting uh, for compiling the project or, uh, or opening it a new window or doing any magic. You just need to click display button and the whole UI will be interactive without clicking it. So now you are in edit mode. So you can select a widget, change its position and just put together your UI. But if you press it, all the animations will start. You can click the buttons and related events will be called and executed. Here we have some menus. And here you can check out the current status of the print. It's another important feature that what you see here is a pixel perfect preview of your design. So it's not just something that almost look like the final design uh, on the target hardware, but it's exactly the same because Squareline Studio also uses LVGL under the hood to render these screens. So what you see here 
will look exactly the same than it will look on a target device. <clears throat> um, now I'd like to show you some uh, some great features in uh, in the first version of SquareLine. For example, we you have a lot of style properties to customize the widgets. Uh, now this welcome label is selected, so I will click uh, or I, I will scroll to the style uh, settings area on the inspector panel. And for example, here I can change the text color. I can set a color here or I can pick a color from the UI. So I will use this blue color now. If I scroll down, I can set a background color. This white color is perfect for now. I can change the radius. All these are rendered in uh, real time by LVGL without using any images. So all these are dynamic as well. Um, let's add the border too. I can set the border color to the same bluish color. And with the padding property, I can make the background a little bit larger. <clears throat> if you want to add new widgets to the uh, to the screens, you can go to the widgets panel here, and you can find the basic building blocks that you can use to put together your UI. We have arc, button, image label, panel, text area, calendar, checkbox, color, wheel, drop down, so many widgets. Basically, almost all widgets that are available in LVGL can be used in SquareLine too. At the bottom of the screen, you can find the components. The components are kind of special widgets because they are not shipped with SquareLine Studio, but they can be uh, created by the designer. If you look, for example, here, you can see that there are some repeti repetitive parts of the UI. For example, this, this is a component which has a header, a big number, a small number, and some background. We have created a component from it. And this way, uh, this is the text BG group. With one click, we can create another instance of this, uh, or this widget group, this component. And if we edit it and change some property and save it, of course, all the instances will be updated automatically. So it's very easy to create a consistent consistent uh, UI design, UI uh, system this way. Once you are happy with your design uh, and your UI, you can export it by clicking on the export menu. And if you select the create template project, it will export a ready to use project. So if you have selected uh, the Nuvoton board, it will create you a ready to use RT thread based project for the selected Nuvoton board that you can start using immediately. If you, are if you choose the export UI files button, it will export uh, completely platform independent UI files. So it will export only C and header files, which can be integrated into any custom project. Okay. That's it very briefly about version one. So this is the current state. Let's talk about the future. In SquareLine Studio version 2, we have changed and upgraded a lot of things. But instead of just talking about it, I'd like to show it as well. So this is SquareLine Studio V2. You might have noticed two things immediately. The first is that it runs in a web browser. So it's a very common, normal Chrome uh, browser in which you can start SquareLine Studio V2. It's very important and very useful because this way you can access your projects from any computer, from anywhere. Probably you might also notice, uh, probably you also notice that uh, the, use, uh, the design and the user experience of the whole uh, editor is completely changed. We have reworked this from the ground to create a much better user, user, user experience. Similarly to SquareLine Studio V1, you can change the position of these panels to create uh, the layout that fits you the best. For example, I will place it here. <clears throat> and we also kept the, the greatest features of SquareLine V1. So, 
So this instant play is working here as well. And the pixel perfect preview is also the same. So this web version also working with LVGL to create and render the images here in this area. All right, so let's see what kind of panels we have here and what we can do here. Mm. We have placed the widgets on top of this toolbar. They are grouped into three, um, yeah, three, three basic groups. We have the basic widgets like arc button, image label, and so on. We have some controllers and visualizers. And for the first button, with the first button, you can create a new screen. If I click it, a new screen will be created. In V2, it's possible to change the position of the screens. So you can place it anywhere you wish. For example, I can place it here in a new row. So if the screens that I'm uh, designing here belong to a new logical, uh, logical group, uh, I can place it here. And if I want to add some related screens, I can place them next to it. Multiple screens can be selected at the same time as well and can be posi positioned. Okay, let's create a widget here. I will create a button. On the inspector panel, I can see its properties. With these nice icons, I can easily arrange it to the middle of the screen, change its size, or I can change its size here as well. For example, uh, I can use not only the pixel unit, but I can use the percentage units as well. With this, I can easily set it to uh, full width, meaning 100% of the parent size, or for example, 50% of the parent size. Below that, we have some flex. Um, with this, you can control the behavior of the widget. Uh, you can make it hidden or visible, clickable or not, click not clickable. And uh, yeah, we have some other options here. However, if you click on this plus button, you can choose from many other flags that you, uh, you can add to this list. These are hidden by default because uh, probably you don't need all of them. So you can add on demand what flags you really need to create an easy to overview and clean layout on the editor. On the styles panel, we can change the appearance of this button. Similarly to the flex, the style properties can be added on demand as well. So I click on this plus button and I can show the uh, background color, the background radius, and the background width and the background color, for example. If I click on this color, this advanced color picker and color editor pop up appears where I can set, for example, a reddish color for this button. I can easily add the gradient. Here I can control where the gradient should start. And with the color picker, I can pick colors from anywhere. So not only from the application, but outside of it. So if I had an image here, for example, or anywhere, I could pick a color from that image. And finally, let's add some opacity to it. Let's set a larger radius. And let's, set, let's add some border too. A simple black border will do it with some opacity again. OK. Now let's add the label to this button. Just go to the basic widgets and select the label. So it's here. Now I can just drag it inside the button, align it to the center, and change its text. Among the style properties, of course, I can change the color of this text as well. It's also very simple to manage the assets. I have some images here, 
and easily I can just drag them into this panel. And to actually add uh, the image to the screen, just drag it, align it to the center, and the new widgets are created in the foreground, so I need to move it to the background if I want to make it a wallpaper. Let's arrange this the position of this button a little bit. And let's try it out. Just click display button and you can see that the button is really working. A great thing is that you can edit the UI while it's running. So right now this button is selected. If I go to the style settings and go to the colors, you can just set a new, new color here change the gradient direction as well if you wish. It's it's a really a great feature because this way while the UI is running, you can fix things, tweak it, and uh, adjust it as you need in uh, real time. And when you stop it, it will, uh, it will be saved. I mean, the changes that you have done will be saved. Um, as you can see with Squareline Studio, you can put together uh, nice assets with great design and great features, great styles, right in the editor. This way, you can start designing your UI right in Squareline. So instead of uh, creating a design, for example, in Photoshop, and after that creating a prototype in Figma or Adobe XD, for example, and after that implementing that design with our prototype with LVGL, you can do all these things in one step and only once in Squareline. So as you create the design, change the appearance of the widgets, it's already a functional, uh, a functional UI. So it's not just a simple rectangle, but if you click the button, as you can see, it's really working. That's it very briefly about uh, V2 in the practice. Uh, a few words about our future plans with Squareline Studio V2. We are planning to release it uh, at the end of this year, and it will uh, support all the main features that V1 can do now, but with one um, big new thing. And this big new thing will be the real-time collaboration support. If you know Figma, um, at how it works, uh, you, you will be able to do the same with Squareline too. So if you use a UI, uh, use Squareline in a browser, multiple users will be accessed to the same workspace, to the same UI at the same time. So multiple people can collaborate um, yeah, at the same time. Uh, this way, you don't have to merge the various versions of the projects. The, it won't collide with, uh, with other, uh, other versions. So it will just provide an easy to use and, and really nice and smooth uh, um, experience to work together. To make it really smooth, of course, you can invite people with write or read-only access. Besides the real-time collaboration support, we will add animation timeline support to make it easy and simple to create uh, complex animations. We will also add an image editor uh, right inside Squareline Studio. It will be like a simple Photoshop to create uh, and edit your images right inside Squareline. And finally, we will add a visual script engine to make it easier to create a really advanced um, functionality uh, in your UI. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Well, thank you so much. That was uh, an awesome presentation. Um, we have got a couple of questions here in the chat. Um, so Jay Thomas asked, uh, he says, I saw most LVGL web examples use mscripten. Can you talk a little towards WebAssembly as a target uh, or the possibilities of porting between uh, WebGL slash WebGPU and LVGL? I'd be interested in using the same graphic source code for embedded devices and the user's web interface. Yeah, uh, so we have um, a ready to use mscripten project. mscripten is the compiler which can create uh, the HTML file from the C files. Um, 
This M script tense compiler uses SDL in the background to create a texture where LVGL can render. And SDL is a really um, complex and mature framework to handle GPU related things. So it works with textures and the uh, other yeah, GPU like things. Um, by default, LVGL uses software rendering. However, we have an SDL GPU support as well. You just need to enable it in LVGL, and after that, it will work with textures and uh, and utilize the, the your video card. So it's quite simple and available out of the box. Uh, you can contact me, and I can tell you uh, the very details of it. Yeah, so basically that's it. Yeah, with this SDL support, you can use um, the web uh, WebGL uh, interface using SDL. Cool. A couple more quick questions before the next presentation. Uh, is Squareline Studio open source? Uh, no, it's a closed source uh, proprietary software. So unlike LVGL, which is open source and free, Squareline is a uh, is closed source proprietary. Okay. Uh, and um, can we import projects from Photoshop or Figma? Uh, not yet. We are considering how feasible it is, uh, but it's not supported at this moment. Probably it will be supported in the future. We are thinking about it. Okay. Um, and people can get in touch with you through LinkedIn and things if they want to ask more questions, presumably. Of course, yeah. You can find me on LinkedIn as Gabor Kishramoshi. You can also find LVGL. And if you want to write an email, it's just lvgl at lvgl.io. So very easy to remember.